hundred million dollars, you can't afford some. I mean, dirt. I was genuinely. All right, that club's a new addition. I've got to keep you on your toes, although maybe I shouldn't do that. That's dangerous for Sophie because of your foot problems. It's a pun. Let's move yes, on. I Hi, welcome I back. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is starting out well. Hi, welcome back to uh, the thing it is that we do. Today I'm here with Manu and Sophie. How, how are you doing? It's great being back on, Liam. Always a pleasure. Excellent. It's okay. I wouldn't say quite a pleasure. It's okay. Gum gum pleasure. I would agree. <laughs> this may or may not be included in the edit, but this recording started off with me making a joke that landed a bit flat, so there's nowhere to go but up, but currently our energy level is pretty... Ugh. You mean flat on the toes? Flat on the toes or the flat that I'm not going to try this again. I'm not doing any more foot puns. Or as flat as my flat feet. No, you, you don't get to make jokes. We, we tried this and we failed. So, interestingly, <laughs> today... We were supposed to be talking about what Sophie is dressed up to talk about, Naruto. <laughs> Even my headband, I forgot. <laughs> and then in last minute, I was like, wait a second. This headband would work perfectly with this episode. <laughs> and now it's all for No, it would. I think you're the second best, uh, second best suited for a Naruto episode. I'm of course the best because I'm cosplaying Naruto's mom's hair. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good shade, actually. It's very solid. Yeah. I suppose you could also say that the cap band is a headband for you, Manu. Yes. True, true, true. If we're really gracious. Which we're not. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? As excited as we are to talk about Naruto, which we will eventually be doing, something more important has come up. A certain trailer for a certain live action about certain fictional pirates was released. And I think we all have thoughts. We all have brain thoughts, don't we? One Piece is what we're talking about. I have heart thoughts. I feel like I'm just going to make a prediction about this episode. We can, we can see if it turns out that way. I would like, like, I'm going to say that... I'll be overly critical. Liam will be somewhere in between. Sophie will be extremely hype about it. But in the end, we will all kind of like, I will start saying something good. And then Sophie will start pitching about it towards the end of the show. Interesting prediction. I will reveal that I fell asleep during the trailer. Yes! During no, the trailer. that's not a reveal. That's just a given. At this point, I would just be shocked if you stayed away during something. I mean, you watched that live, right? You watched it in like 3 a.m. or something. Well, to Doom probably start, might have started around that time. I woke up around 6.30. No, I was awake when it came out as well. It was at about somewhere between 7 and 8. I yeah, think, it was outside. closer to 8. I know this because I considered streaming, live streaming while I was watching it live. But I was supposed to go to my nephew's first birthday party. And I would have had to leave pretty much Cancel as it. soon as the live action ended oh the live action trailer finished and so i thought it's not worth streaming in that case and with every bloody show that netflix was premiering or you know oh having my a God, little yeah it took section so for long. every new show i was like get it over with i do not care i don't care just show me one piece after a while i got incredibly bored of watching it as well so i put it on mute in the background and i didn't even see the trailer on the to doom thing first because it it was put on twitter about 10 minutes before it happened on the live stream really so i was like oh, okay trailer there yeah, thus defeating the point of actually watching the thing in the first place. I didn't realize that was what had happened because I just saw people sharing it on Twitter. And what I thought was happening was that Australia was so far behind. Far behind. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. That we were like 10 minutes behind and we were still watching the live streaming of all of these other shows while people had already watched a trailer live through to Doom. And I was thinking, mm. what the hell is going on with Australia's internet? That's fair. Yeah, that legitimately does happen. During Eurovision every year, Australia is like 60 seconds behind in the voting. So if I'm talking to someone watching from England, they know all of the results 60 seconds before I do. And it's infuriating. Is that your wife? Is that, <laughs> is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> No, it is not. But the good advice, just don't talk to anyone. That solves most problems, actually. I had like a very different experience. It was like, I think the first time that not being on Twitter or not being active on Twitter the recent months has been like biting me in the ass because I woke up with like, I think three or four long threats in my team Slack channel of people discussing the trailer. And I had legit not known that the trailer was like, like gonna drop at all. I was like, there's a trailer. <laughs> so I watched it, I think like half an hour after it dropped on YouTube when I got up. Uh, 
a, ja a Japanese time. But for me, like, I was not aware. Like, I, I went on Twitter and I saw that, like, I don't know, like, what the hell is a tutum or whatever? <laughs> I was like, I was like, what does this stand for? What is this? We weren't certain that it was going to be a trailer. It was either going to be that or just to talk with the cast on the stage. Can I quickly double check with you guys? Was is it actually a trailer trailer? Because it felt more like a teaser. It's a teaser trailer. Yeah, it's a teaser trailer. A trailer trailer would be like two to three minutes long. It's a first taste. I mean, that should be coming out soon too. Well, I'm going to kick this off because I think I'm going to have to be the resident defender of the live action. Not necessarily. As has been pretty much the case. I'm going to say I loved it. I know what I okay, heard that's a bit people's <laughs> concerns about that's it, but I honestly much, have Sophie. to say I was grinning from ear to ear that my mouth hurt by the end of the trailer. I was like clapping. Okay. I was I was super, super excited. And I don't know if it's just anticipation and the fact that I just waited that long. So by the end of it, I was like, why is it so is going, no, cringe I, imagining you being in your room alone at like 7 a.m. in the morning? <laughs> Clapping to your phone. <laughs> it's it's kind of cute though, I'll say. I couldn't help it. I was thinking like, oh my god, I was screaming. I was, and I wasn't, to be fair, I wasn't alone because I did come to the studio because I had thought that maybe I'd be able to stream. But then by the time we got through all of the different other different shows, I was like, oh yeah, there's no way that I'm going to be able to stream this. I think that it has really exceeded my expectations. I know that I have always been sort of the, I've always said that I'm really excited for the live action and all the other times, you know, notwithstanding some of the concerns that I had for it, I've always said that I am really looking forward to it. But I would actually say that it has even exceeded what I was expecting. I think Liam and me are totally co-signing on exceeding the expectations, but I'm still not on board with the love. <laughs> love is a very strong word. <laughs> <laughs> It's like Liam's, Liam's wedding vows. Uh, I don't know, Chantel, that's a very strong word. Can we remove that from the vow? Yeah. Can we just say to, you know, to have and to like a lot? And maybe we'll decide how we really feel about it at a later date instead of locking it in now at the wedding. Yeah, like before we, we get into like the inevitable negativeness that it is that we do. Exceeding expectations, it absolutely did. This could have been... Oh. A dumpster fire. So, so easily. I'll be a little bit mean. The optimism didn't last long. Getting a bit of the back, you know, um, I guess look behind the scenes and stuff and seeing what like um, Owen and so, and so on did and seeing how much love was being and money was being poured into this. Despite all that, I was still like so skeptical. I was really expecting something horrendous to come out of this trailer already before watching it. So um, it definitely, as, as Sophie said, it did. It, it did completely exceed my expectations they they were fairly low but like from my end i can say the fact that i'm carefully optimistic about the show is already one of the biggest compliments i feel like i could have given it in the first place because i, I mean i'm not sure how many live actions <laughs> So, but Sophie, how many live actions have you seen? Because I've seen I've seen a lot of like manga and anime live action adaptations. I genuinely can't think of a single one that made it past bearable. So, in general, the genre and the the form of adaptation is just not very. It doesn't allow for a lot of like optimism <laughs> from to begin with, given the track record that it has. I don't know. With One Piece in particular, sorry, Sophie. I know this was a question for you, but I'm, I'm usurping the the microphone i think the trailer gets stronger the more times you watch it the first time mm. i watched it i wasn't feeling all that great about it the second time i watched it i was getting into it a bit more and by the third fourth fifth sixth etc i've watched it a lot now i've kind of started to accept the style that it looks like we're in for and i'm enjoying it a lot more than i did that initial reaction interesting i had the exact opposite experience i actually i was really that's when i tweeted out <laughs> about it like the first time i watched it i was like wow this is this looks good i'm like let's go and then you started ripping it apart <laughs> you're like i don't like that i don't like that i don't like that i don't like that you were like no 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 this isn't right this isn't right i i cannot like this live action i must find something wrong with it i think i think the problem is also uh, and I, I think i had that discussion in in the with who was that i don't that might have been archer or like someone in the in the in the group chat i think my thing is and i i totally agree that it was probably a good idea that they're going into a more 
a little bit more quirky, kind of like more cartoonish, child like child-friendly style. And I, I do completely agree that that's probably a good choice and they should like, it was correct to do this. But from my personal taste, I was kind of hoping for something with a little bit more edge, I guess, visually. And that doesn't doesn't have to necessarily mean like make it like oh, everyone has has to bleed to death and make it like you know chainsaw massacre piece or whatever. It was more like it looked too clean for me, um, and I feel like for the amount of budget that they had, I would have kind of wished for a little bit more realistic take. Because for example, I did really enjoy that with some of the characters they did not 100% go like the cosplay route. And it, it's not like, oh, we need to give like the Usopp character the funny, like the long nose, because it would have kind of looked weird or like the Sanji eyebrows were a big one. Yeah, they got rid of the nose. They got rid of Sanji's eyebrows. Yeah, so it's like eyebrows. these like little things that I think are good decisions to make it more- Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, does Luffy have his scar? He does. It's a faint outline. You can see that it's the, it's not as noticeable, but it's like a, like a, um, you know when scars are raised? You can definitely yeah. tell. So I think, all of these are pretty good choices in my opinion like kind of like bringing a certain amount of realism to these characters and not like cosplaying them in a weird way for me personally style wise was just a little bit contradicted by then this like over cleanness of like certain elements i would have just really liked mm. to to see like a sort of pirates of the caribbean kind of a little bit dirty around the edges you know dusty like this is a this is a kind of this pot like you know the, the world that One Piece is kind of like dirty. Everyone's like, there's a reason why everyone's pirates, right? Like everyone, mm. like all these people living in poverty and so on and so forth. It is, but due to the style, One Piece is actually very clean. Like visually, at the very least. Texturally, One Piece is a very clean world. Clean enough that Luffy yeah. needs to bathe like once a week. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the reason. And never looks dirty. I think, look, watching like, watching it, because I'm, I'm scrolling through like anime clips throughout the time, and I think even the anime adds like a lot more texture. You think the anime adds more texture than the live action? That's wild. That is a why is, is, is texture the right word? Are we just missing your point here? I'm not sure how to describe it, but like, this is just a random, right? I was just like typing in One Piece anime and this is like one thing. Like given this is of course Luffy like in the, in the prison and he's bandaged up and stuff like that. That's from the anime. It's like, you can see it's like the little lines, it's dirty. It's like a dirty cloth is like a little bit bloody. Yeah, uh, you've picked a very visceral image though. <laughs> of Luffy like bleeding and in prison. So would you would like, you say then Manu, so the scenes that you saw of Zoro, for example, tied up, you still felt like those were too too clean? Like you would have liked it to be to be rougher than that? Like grittier, I suppose is the word. Yes, I think it, it and again, I, 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 I'm totally, it's, it's like not a major criticism from my end. I don't think it's a mistake that they did not do it. It's just like my personal taste. I personally have a hard time, had a little bit of a hard time, like they did not sell me the world. In, the, in that case, in these trailers, because I felt like it did not feel like a real world, it felt like a reenactment to me, like almost like theater or something. Yeah, I would, I would, I can <laughs> see that. I, can I would see agree how with you that. that. It almost has a bit of a pantomime vibe about it, which mm. I honestly don't mind. Which again, I, I don't, I yeah, don't think, neither. yeah, I don't think it's a mistake. It's just like me personally, I kind of would have wished to really, because I think the, the, the wide shots of like the islands that we got, um, you know, like where Zoro is, the, the marine base, and then of um, Fusha Village and stuff. I thought those looked gorgeous and those sold me this being a real world. And then we got the close-ups with the characters and then it's kind of like, oh, we're now, we're in the studio. I sort of get what you mean by that. There is a bit of a clash between like, close-up acting work is in this hyper-stylized world, uh, location, yeah. wide shots are in this very, very real, beautifully shot, beautifully lit, textural world I, I get what you mean in that regard when you look at the i'm not sure if you have the trailer open right now but when you look for example at that shot of i think it's shell town right it, that one has grit because that one looked like it could be a real place like that could be somewhere i think it's based in italy but it, it could is. also like if you told, told me that's like based on brazil or something like kind of has like that that vibe too with the terraces and stuff in fact it's interesting because if you zoom in on it you can kind of see the uh the sort of fake marine base that's been plonked on top of this real place but if you don't look at it too if you don't look at it too deeply it's fine and that one does a way better job of selling me this as a real place in a real world oh that's interesting we are in such opposite camps because i I would want it to be 
to be less real in that case and kind of match what the actors are doing a bit more in this uh, hyper stylized state. I can see that. I can see that though, and like that's that's why I say it's like my biggest personal problem with the trailer. But it's not something I personally think like, oh, they made a mistake not doing that. Like I can absolutely see why they did it, and I can totally understand when someone says they're kind of happy with that choice. It, uh, really, it's it's just my personal take. I guess I kind of would have wished for One Piece since it already like the the manga is still a shonen manga the the anime is a shonen anime and so i kind of i guess had a little bit that hope with that netflix with that really big budget that almost game of thrones like budget that they had i was like oh maybe they're gonna go a little bit more mature with this yeah, one what? you guys can't afford dirt for your faces hundred million dollars you can't afford some i mean dirt. i was genuinely what i i was like dude that <laughs> rope that like that it looked like because i mean when you go from the story, like uh, Zoro has been tied up there for what a month, twenty days is, is like right. It's 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 been forever. He has not eaten. He's probably pooped maybe, himself. Maybe not. Right. Depends He's like probably this. not that we need to see that. Right. I'm just saying like he has a bright white shirt. <laughs> What? You got a hundred million dollars? You can't make a man shit on the floor? Come on, <laughs> like, Netflix. Come on. Like, where's the where's the CGI when you need it? The scene did not sell me what the anime sold me, where it's like Zoro joins Luffy because he has literally no other choice. In a way, he's starving to death and he would die like the, the message is he would die there because he's already so weak that he can't do anything, basically needs food. It's kind of like, yeah. nope, I'm gonna sit through this, right? And even if it even if it kills me to to, to fulfill that promise, and he's just in a really bad, it's the wor one of the worst situations we see Zoro in, in the entire story, I would argue, right? I think the direction you were hoping for would have been suicide for a project like this. I think if you're going to do it, you need to just go all out, like embrace the wacky or it's not gonna work and as it is that's pretty much the only chance i think that this has of working if it manages to straddle that line and i would agree with you which is why i say that i don't think it's a mistake not doing it yeah, yeah. i i see what i do definitely see where you're coming from manu understanding that that was just your personal preference and maybe I, don't, I wouldn't know if you necessarily had an expectation but that's something that you would have liked i can definitely see where you're coming from but yes i think we can all agree that given that they also have to bridge it what is it the entire east blue in is it 10 is it how many episodes eight episodes apparently we have the episode titles as well wasn't it till arlong park i feel like i read that somewhere we see the barrel scene at the end so we get to at least the end of log town where they're about to enter reverse mountain by the looks of it yeah and one of the last episode titles like they say they're not in order they look like they're practically in order is worst in the east which i think is luffy getting his bounty yeah so like i think that's why the theatrical element or the theatrical style that they have obviously chosen to take I think fits really well it does feel like exactly what you said I think I think that's what you said Manu towards the beginning of um, this discussion that it seems more like a reenactment that's exactly what it felt like for me but in a good way like in a fun way where I'm going to the theater watching like a musical or watching a show and maybe it comes down to that then because I know Manu you're not a huge fan of musicals yes. musical is such a great comparison. It, that is a great comparison and I think that really Really comes down to personal taste which might be how this like plays out for like fans and I was gonna say something similar too it, I think it comes down to that what what type of entertainment do you like but also how do you yourself see one piece yeah. so you've got the people who see gear fifth as the white wacky luffy and then you've got the people who see gear fifth as the black hockey covered dark x strong muscle luffy exactly i mean and i think you you're infamous for like describing one piece as the goofy pirate manga people still hate me for that to this day yeah exactly and i think that's like if you, if you can't uh, first of all i mean the people who don't see what that, that you take that as a term of endearment i mean feel bad for the people who don't realize that but also i think that's again it's it's completely a major part of one piece and what makes it special i'm just like personally someone who really appreciates the goofiness and the comedy but what what i really like about one piece is is the deeper levels that are kind of like hidden and layered under the goofiness the the serious like more political stuff mm. and it works together i think it, it like that those are both parts of one piece i think it would be really interesting to see how many seasons 
the live action, I guess, undertakes in that case, especially as things do get grittier and darker and the themes get heavier and they're not relying so much on the, I don't know, slapstick, the right word to use because that's the feeling that I get from this. They're relying quite a bit on that style. Again, not that I'm expecting it and not, not that it's like should have been this way for sure. I'm just saying, I think the dark material and the dark undertones are very much there right from the first chapter of the story. They are, and they're definitely here in the first season. What we don't see anything of in the trailer is those darker moments. Like, we mm. don't see Arlong Park stuff, or at least it doesn't look like we do. There might be some stuff in there, but we don't see Arlong. We don't see, like, you know, stabbing of the, the arm. We don't even see, like, Don Krieg and Kuro, who are serious villains, quotation marks. So we've only really seen, like, the introductory, the launching point. But I would agree that, like, now they have to stick with the style, which is like why Buggy was kind of out of place in that trailer, because Buggy kind of felt like part of that trailer that I wanted to see, but did not kind of fit in the trailer that the rest of the trailer that I saw. Does that make sense? But when you when you think about it from a theatrical point of view, it actually does make sense because I feel like in theatre that is how they do really do the polar opposite. So when someone is evil, they're really going to make up and make that character embody evil in a lot of sense, which I think is a bit strange given. Even Buggy's role in the story as very much a goofy villain, but maybe that's how Not they decided Orange to Town. differentiate. In Orange Even Town, in he Orange was Town. fearsome at first, at the very least during his introduction. Yes, but, but he gets goofy pretty I think quick. as the arc, yeah, I think as the arc went on, it was pretty clear that yeah, he was. Yeah, but you know, this this shot of Buggy is it's clearly not like mid fight with no, Goofy. This no. is like an <laughs> introduction shot to the terrifying yeah. clown man. My favorite shot in the trailer, by the way. Just have to say it. I uh, really like that buggy. Yeah, I mean, I looked at it and I was like, that is fucking sick. I mean, I think I might have tweeted that <laughs> straight away. I was honestly... <laughs> <laughs> That's some Pennywise stuff, yeah. yeah. I think the actors so far, at least what we can tell from that, from the few seconds that we get from everyone, it seems very, like, acting-wise. I feel like that's often been the case, though, for live actions, that it's definitely not an acting problem. You've not seen Dragon Ball Evolution. I have not. <laughs> True. But I mean, I feel like Luffy is sold pretty well. I do have, again, nitpicky, which is just me personally and not criticism to the show again. I'm just, I've never watched One Piece in English and it just feels very cringy. It's talking, seeing the characters talk in English and the gum gum. I kind of wish they had stuck with the gumu gumu, but um, it's, it's again, <laughs> it's not criticism. It's not criticism because, again, it's an English produced show with international actors. It's One Piece is not, as a story, doesn't, is not like taking place in Japan, obviously, right? It's just weird. It's because we're too close to the source material. Like if they did stick with gomu gomu no pistole, then we'd all be going, yay, that's fun. But the English or audiences watching who don't know anything about One Piece just gonna be going like, oh, that's kind of cringe. That's a bit weeb. I don't really like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I, this is where I have to be on the fence about this because is it acceptable to have wanted like Gomu Gomu no Pistol and just have a merge of the two? That's what because I thought too. I would too. agree that rather than the gum, I would have preferred the Gomu. I have been would have been good with Gomu Gomu no Pistol too. Uh, I mean, Me I would have been fine with it, but I just don't think it works for a wider audience. Gum Gum is just so weird. I don't necessarily think that's the case because... You can just say Gomu Gomu Pistol. Yeah, exactly. It, What's a Gomu? But I think that level, to that level, I I think you could expect even a white audience or a non-Japanese audience to get, I don't know, subtly introduced to the Japanese origin. Okay, but then are you going to do the same thing with the other fruits? Like, like the bara bara no mi? Like when Buggy's shouting like, bara bara! You can't, you can't put that together. I don't know. I guess it then comes down to, do we want to see something that's more consistent throughout the entire show with like, <laughs> to make sure that everything is in English or to make sure everything is in Japanese? Or can we just do a hybrid and just see what sounds more yes. natural? I do think we're touching on like one <sighs> core problem though that plagues all live actions is there are just elements that are just very, very hard to actually bring to life in a convincing way. And the best thing you can hope for is it being passable. All right. I feel I feel like some things, again, like same for Luffy's. The Luffy rubber animation for a reason is one of the most controversial things of this trailer. I think, I think it looks 
passable. I'm, and I'm genuinely, I, I strongly believe that it's almost impossible to visualize that in a live action in a way where I would have gone, wow, that's exactly what this should look like in real life. I'm just not sure if that exists, which again, is like just a fundamental limitation to that format per se, adapting anime, I personally think. I get what you're saying, Manu, because the way I think about it is One Piece already loses a lot when the manga is translated into English. And then I think there's another layer of loss when you dub the anime, and that's another step forward. And then I think there's a further layer of loss when you make that anime live action with all of that English. There's like, there's a lot happening there. And I don't know, live action is typically that one step too far in I'm gonna go so far as to say every other project we've seen so far. Which again is like going back to what Sophie said at the beginning of the episode, which is why why I my, my reaction was fairly positive on Twitter and stuff, where I feel like the fact that this was not horrible is already a pretty big win. No, it sounds bad, but it is a massive win. Yeah, it it, it is really a massive like it, it again for the audience also like saying oh this is not terrible is as good as it gets for like any live action when the trailer is out because mm. there, we we have to be careful because obviously we can only judge it when the first episode is properly out because there is there is something like story that's very important obviously how how is the story being told how are the dialogues we've seen a few and I, i'm just gonna assume that they held back some of their best sets but they also didn't show like their worst sets so there's gonna be like some highs that we definitely have not seen yet but probably also some not quite like they definitely picked like nice stuff nonetheless for the for the trailer i think for the teaser so obviously it's only going to be judgeable once we see the the product as a whole but again the fact that we're even sitting here and being like hey, this could go either way is already a big win in itself i do think i would agree with both of you guys and i would say that especially when it comes to the the english language or the fact that it's in english at first the first piece of dialogue threw me off a little bit and and then very quickly, I very like I adjusted to it. I think it makes you really realize that you just have to appreciate this like as its own entity. And I don't think as an adaptation. Yeah, yeah, you have to appreciate it for just what it is instead of going in and constantly comparing it with the original source material. Otherwise, I think it's always going to fall short. Which is why, ironically, I think people like us are not the ones to come to to review this when it actually does come out. I think you need to look to people who just talk about it entertainment in general and it is meant also to bring to bring one piece to like a new audience also that might not have wanted to engage with manga or anime beforehand so again it's a as you said Liam it's a different audience than us Sophie maybe you because you're I would say a newer fan than the two of us it is very difficult for me to tear myself from the source material because that's been with me for almost two decades now so it's real difficult to let go we've just talked about the anime and even like the anime kind of diverging right now a little bit from the the manga that is already kind of difficult to take maybe it's a bit unfair of me to say this because I know that I have been quite harsh with the anime diverting from the source material but I think that <laughs> That is more understandable because with the anime, they have always been pretty close to the source material. And unless, apart from like the pacing issues and things like that, I feel like the anime has almost always been like a one-to-one. -one. Whereas with the live action, agree. it's a completely different endeavor because like we just said, they're going to have to shorten some storylines. They're going to have to make changes. Like if we, it looks like Nami, for example, is there with Luffy and Zoro. During Shell's Town. Yeah. yeah, and that's a pretty major change. But at the same time you understand it when you consider why they've had to do that which again like it's it's a whole new layer of difficulty with live action because there is just things that don't make sense to include whether it's like you know like subtleties that have to do with japanese whether it's you know stuff that's just not really driving the story i mean it was that that's that's a story like it's literally what oda wrote when he started out so there is i'm sure like things that you you can kind of exclude especially in that but but it, it just adds this level of difficulty where some things you do want to keep really close to the source material or you're going to anger fans but other things if you actually include it's going to like slow the story down it's such a tight rope you have to yeah, walk i agree and i think the I, I think the standard that i have for it is whether it captures the heart of what One Piece is. Mm. And for me, I feel like yeah. from what I saw from the teaser trailer, it definitely captured that same sort of 
warmth and same sort of happiness mm. that I feel watching or reading One Piece. I would agree. I wouldn't be even that strict. I wouldn't. I would even say even if it feels different than the One Piece I know, I'm like, if as you said, so if if I'm smiling and I'm kind of like that was fun. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Even even if it kind of does its own thing and it's not 100% capturing the spirit of One Piece, as long as it's well done, I'm like totally on board with it. Like as long as as I'm, I have a great time watching the show. Like, that's a success to me, honestly. You reckon if it's a great time watching the show? Because I feel like that would be harder. Like, I, I feel like expecting to always have a great time watching the show might be a bit of a harder expectation to f fulfill. Isn't that the very basic yeah, expectation I mean, that is, of a show? That is so subjective because that comes down to, like, yeah. personal enjoyment versus expectations and the kind of media you like to watch and what time you're watching it. Are you falling asleep if you're Sophie? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That is such a difficult... That is such a difficult difficult thing to, uh, to answer. <laughs> Manu, can I ask, what did you think of the dialogue in the trailer? How did it gel with you? I will say, as, uh, after the initial cringe with the English, act, like I actually like the, the last scene, I kind of laughed. I, I did like that a lot. No, they do. Yeah, I, I mean, I like was a big fan of the, of the dialogue. Again, why I say I think like it's not going to be an acting problem. For sure, and I guess in that sense, it's 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 dialogue. Also, I think I think it was really cool. I felt Luffy felt very Luffy again, kind of translated into English, which again you have to kind of get over a little bit because it's not that you know Japanese kind of like <laughs> it's it's more like it's it's the Luffy spirit, but it's it's an actual boy. Does that make sense? So I think that that worked really well. I thought I mean Mucking You is pretty good as Zoro. I feel like they nailed it. The costume too. Nami's costume, I did. I mean I think Emily Rod like seems to be the perfect person and probably the only person who could have like played Nami. The perfect person. I feel like she looks like Nami. No? No, I was just making a joke because you said I feel like Emily Rudd is the perfect person. Pause. And then you I worship and Emily Rudd. Don't listen to what I say. <laughs> I'm mostly just making sad quips. Mumbling in insults. <laughs> Surprisingly I felt like Zoro's hair was more believable than Nami's. I'm not sure if I'm alone with that. I felt I like agree. Zoro, like Zoro, I believed 100%. I thought like the green hair might be a problem. Dude, I, I bought that complete character. Again, Emily Rudd as Nami, perfect fit. Just the hair kind of looked a little bit cosplay for lack of a better term, but it was just a few shots we saw with her. So that might just be like kind of like that maybe because it stood out contrast wise especially in those shots i don't know but yeah I, I mean going back to your original question dialogue wise i thought it was surprisingly funny I, like i i did really appreciate the originality okay. of the dialogue i was not expecting that opinion okay well, what's your opinion Very good my opinion is the dialogue was really jarring for me especially like the banter scene <laughs> Uh, between Luffy, Zoro, and Nami. Really? Uh, this is one of those things where, again, in my review of the trailer, I said this, it might be the right thing for these characters to be doing, but it's not the right thing for the characters that I currently have in my mind to be doing. And that's going to be a barrier that I just need to, like, let go of. But I will say that by the end of the trailer, that Luffy, Zoro interaction, that did get a smile out of me. So I think, you know, it might be thawing, but every time I get to that part in the trailer, I'm just a bit like... Eh, I don't know, it seems a bit bit too clever to Luffy, whereas maybe he would have said something like, ah, it's so good to see the crew getting along and just not being aware of the tension whatsoever. I don't know, yeah. I did not have that problem, surprisingly. I am surprised. I do see what you mean, Liam. It does change the character somewhat, because I think um, I watched that in your video as well, the fact that even Zoro seems a bit too smart and doesn't seem to be <laughs> as goofy as he is in early One Piece. And I see that too, but yeah. They're all very clever. Mm. I mean, which obviously makes sense for Nami because she's always been very clever. Third smartest Denise Blue. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with Mecha Yu, like with the actor who plays Zoro, but I feel like as soon as he was announced as the casting for Zoro... I saw him in Jojo. He is... I don't think he is the type of actor who would play a goofy, super goofy character. So I feel like that was kind of... That was exactly what I expected when he got cast. So maybe, I don't know, that did not surprise me that he was not that goofy Zoro. I don't know. Have you seen the live-action Jojo? Bizarre Adventure, because he plays a pretty wacky 
cocky guy in that. Well, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But even that character has like kind of like cool vibes, if you know what I mean, despite the wackiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get what you mean. I think once I quickly realized that this is just something I have to appreciate on its own, I think I was really on board with everything. It, the way that it felt to me is sort of like, I can't say this from experience um, when it comes to One Piece itself, but I've seen clips, for example, I know at the Tokyo Tower, they used to do those musical reenactment type stuff. The stage shows. Yeah, those stage shows. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of the same feeling that I get with it when you get sort of like a short snippet and it makes you laugh and it makes you feel happy and you're entertained for what it is without necessarily thinking like, that's not right. That doesn't stay close to the source material. He shouldn't have said this. It sort of just captures the heart and the pure sort of like giddiness mm -hmm. that One Piece uh, tends to um, tends to elicit. And that's the feeling that I got from from the teaser trailer and I think that's why it made me happy because I got that feeling and at the same time looking at seeing Buggy in that state you're still like oh like that's pretty cool like I mean it was such a cool show yeah honestly. and so I think that's why um and that's why I also say that I'm I'd be more interested to see how it goes beyond the first season to see whether it can retain that charm or whether it or gets change it yeah. Evolve it. Exactly. Because I think East Blue is still a very forgiving era. Exactly, right? It's before anything crazy really starts to happen. Yeah, however, I will say, obviously, how you approach everything in the very first season and, like, how, how you approach things happening later on in the story will kind of affect how much you can or what you can and will do in upcoming seasons. I mean, like, one thing is, of course, hockey is how do you portray that? You know, do you, like, hint at it very strongly and it kind of integrate that into the story a lot more than it was in the manga. I mean, Manu, we might have that answer from episode one. They might layer in something with Shanks and the Lord of the Coast happening here because we know what that was now. Oh, speaking of which, Lord of the Coast. The CGI. Thoughts? He looks good. I like him. Again, exceeded my He's expectation. He's a nice big sea boy. <laughs> Even Luffy's arm. I agree with you completely, Manu, that I don't think there would have ever been something that I would have been 100% like, that is amazing. Generally, this was a really good attempt at bringing this to life, as good as I personally could have come up with. It's just such a difficult thing to, to sell realistically. <laughs> is that the Manu review? It's about as good a job as I personally could have done. <laughs> <laughs> Or just like high praise, high praise. <laughs> <laughs> the devil fruits. I I would make the the what the daring statement that I think devil fruits are gonna be one of the factors that make or break this entire show. Something like smoker, mm. which there aren't that many in season one. Buggy will be a big one. Alvita being slippery. I feel like Alvita might be a bit easier. Buggy is more forgiving, I feel though, because his character with that intense costume and makeup, it's a lot easier to hide. Things. Because in the anime you just see black where he kind of chops himself off and with Buggy's costume and like seeing that the shot is already kind of in the dark kind, you can kind of mas masquerade over the fact that like oh is are we actually seeing like inside his body or is it black like you, you don't have to worry about it because we can't really see under his clothes or whatever is happening right with like Luffy and Smoker and Alvita it's gonna be a little bit more interesting because their devil fruits are I guess a little bit more visually intense especially Smoker I'm very curious if he's gonna be in the first uh, uh, season I feel like Alvita might be quite simple to do as well uh like smoke i think you could get away with it with like special effect but i think what really what i'm really interested in is arlong or like arlong or any of the fishmen really yes all fishmen yeah is it going to be cg fishmen or costume fishmen or both again my prediction would be that i kind of like arlong i will kind of imagine will kind of look something along the lines of the the coast. Really? Because I was coast. actually I think thinking Arlong's the opposite. Look like the Lord of the Coast. Ooh. Not not gonna, yeah. look, but like I feel like visually, kind of in that CG direction, is what I would guess. Okay, I was actually thinking the exact opposite. I hope not. Especially after seeing like Sanji's hair, for example, the way that and Buggy even the feeling that I got was that they might do more of a costume makeup and get this feeling of a fishman. More man than fish. Yeah, exactly. More man than fish. So like you can sort of tell that. That he's not quite human. Usopp not having his nose, for example. I think that's what that's the direction that we might go with the fishman. Oh yeah, if Usopp doesn't have his nose, then his Harlong probably won't either. <laughs> Did you guys see mm. Garp's ship? Yeah. Yeah. I'm very interested in what's happening there. 
Because Garp doesn't have a hell of a lot to do in East Blue, he's just on the cover story. So it's very interesting to see how they're gonna use him. I might be wrong, I kind of- I kind of feel like we might be getting the- the Luffy flashback from the war in this season is what, like, was my first thought no. of Garp sailing. And it's in, like, dropping Luffy at Dawn Island? Yeah. Would it be my guess that we get, like, Luffy's, like, Luffy's entire kid story kind of in one go? No. With Ace no. and Sabo? That's too much for eight episodes. I think they have a hard enough time cramming East Blue into eight episodes without adding in the second flashback. I mean, do we know how long each episode is gonna be? An hour. Yeah, I also said, if we had 15 minutes to an hour, I feel like... Mate, your time management Management must be phenomenal. <laughs> what I was expecting with Garp is that it might be him and Kobe. Maybe. What are you going to do in an hour for the first chapter? It's not just the first chapter. They're cramming in like the first chapter and probably like the Alveda and Kobe stuff as well. And then after that, they'd like move to Orange Town. Let's see the episode titles actually. That'll give us a great idea of what's happening. One big argument against my theory is that I don't think they cast anyone for Ace or Sabo, so. <laughs> that, no, that... I don't think so either. Whereas Garp, we knew. Yeah, episode one. Romance Dawn seems legit. Doesn't say much. Episode 2, The Man in the Straw Hat. Episode 3, Tell No Tales. Mm. Episode 4, The Pirates Are Coming, so we know exactly where that is. And then episode 5 is Eat at Baratier. So five episodes into this, we are already at Baratier. Which is understandable. Mm. That seems about right. And then after that, it's The Chef and the Chore Boy. So Baratier is a two-part affair, two episodes, which is interesting because that means that Arlong either gets only one or like one and a bit episodes. The girl with the sawfish tattoo and then worst in the east. So maybe there is no log town. Maybe they just set sail from Arlong Park. Yeah, I, th I think it only goes down to Arlong. Yeah, I feel like it must only go to Arlong, which then would also solve the smoker problem because it would really reduce how many devil fruit. Temporarily. I mean, it gets only worse from here with the devil fruit. I don't think that smoker is as big a problem as a lot of other powers would be. I think that Luffy's stretching is a bigger problem than Smoker smoking. Yeah, not just Luffy stretching, but imagine like the balloons. <sighs> I mean, with smokers also, do you just put some CGI smoke and put a head on top of it? Or do you like have the head in the sh sh like, kind of like in the shape of smoke or? I don't know. I, I've not done this, but I feel like elemental manipulation is something that live action is really kind of mastered as opposed to human manipulation. Like I don't have as many fears about say like, Ace if they ever got to him, as I do about Luffy. Just wanna say, I think like a Kainu I is like one of the characters I absolutely do want to see in live action, just like body, like his body like melting in like lava. I feel like that could look pretty sick. Yeah, season five's gonna be great. If this does get past season one, I think it is just gonna be playing great. Most live action. Oh, that's a huge success. It is. In fact, I think it might take it further than any other live action series from an anime. Do you feel like for one for the for the live action in general, do you feel like having that massive fan base for both the manga and the anime is that a plus in the sense that a lot of people are going to watch this because it is one of the most beloved franchises? Or do you feel like it's more of a drag where as Sophie said earlier, this might be a really good show exactly for people who have not seen and engaged with One Piece in and not a show for like hardcore fans and kind of the hardcore fans are going to maybe like not like it as much. Whereas like people who are not familiar with the franchise might be really positive positively involved in it and they're more like a drag on the series. I actually think that the fact that One Piece is the most popular series, even though hardcore fans might not love it in the same way that we love the manga and the anime, I think that will still be a plus for the live action because one, there's a greater pool of people who will inevitably just accept, accept. the series, like accept the live action for what it is and enjoy it in its own right. But also I think One Piece, because of the very style and nature of the series itself, I think people will be more forgiving of the live action. Like, there are two types of people, right, who really enjoyed Film Red for what it was and accepted that it was like, you know, accepted all the musical and like the elements of that. And then there were some people who were like, okay, like, what the fuck is this? This is not like any other anime films that I've you know watched. Who you are. Then there's me who loved the <laughs> musical elements, but really didn't so much enjoy ah. the others. A weird in between. I'm still listening to the musical film rap right. soundtrack. Mm. Yeah, Otto still comes on every now and then, actually. A new Genesis still to this day. Anyway, what so was good. Sophie's point? <laughs> 
I got caught up in thinking about film red. <laughs> One Piece is at the level of such name recognition that even if you're not really an anime or manga person, you've probably kind of heard about it by now if you've at all been invested tangentially in media. And I think that having a live action project is the thing that will tip a lot of people into into acquiescing and going, oh, I guess I'll check it out now that it's a big fancy Netflix series. So I think it has that going for it. Which again is why I have so, why I'm really having my fingers crossed for a live action insanely positive impression I had of the trailer is gonna live up to to my now really slightly raised hopes and excite people and be like where people watch this it's their first touching point with One Piece and they go like I wonder what happens after this let's check out the anime kind of like my fear comes from and I think we were talking about this before Sophie my fear comes from the more, I guess, how shall we say, normie reactions. Because this trailer has gotten a lot of attention from people who wouldn't normally talk about One Piece, like probably big creators. And they all kind of have the same opinion after reacting to it, which is, uh, it looks kind of cringe. And I think that as One Piece fans, weirdly enough, we are more open to accepting the wackiness of it. Who, for, who reacted to that? Uh, Charlie reacted to it. Uh, I think Asmongold reacted to it. If you just type in One Piece live action trailer reaction, like, there's it's, it's, it's so many people. I actually completely agree with you, Liam. That's why I actually think that rather than the live action being for a completely different target audience, I'm sure it will, you know, expand the audience, I actually think it is more worthwhile for people who are at least somewhat interested in the story. Somewhat familiar. Not even just familiar, but actually hmm. interested in the story. Or the atmosphere and accept, of it, the and, vibe yeah, and of understand it. what the heart and the spirit of One Piece is. Because otherwise, hmm. if, if this is your first point of reference, then I don't think it would get you in. It's sort of like watching the Funimation dub for the first time and thinking like, this is a bit cringe. Whereas if you're already, if you're already familiar and you like the series and you know the spirit and you know the like comedy, then I think you'd be more accepting and forgiving. Mm, I agree. Again, like this is just me kind of like, and I'm, always very pessimistic about new things. So I think the fact that I'm genuinely now excited <laughs> to watch this and see what it happens is like a major, major props to, to the show. One thing I've been wondering is wouldn't it, might it have been better, you guys think, to wait till One Piece is actually over and then kind of have the anime catch up and then we have a fresh no. take on things now? No. There, there's, it's been plenty of time since East Blue. This is the time to do it when One Piece is at like- The final saga. It's Zenith, it's final arc. People are still actively invested in it. I mean, people are still very actively invested in Naruto and Dragon Ball, I will say. Yep, like we will be. Not too invested, I didn't even get our members up. Let's see who we are thanking today. Okay, everyone say thank you to XVII. Thank you, XVII. Thank you, XVII. Greatly appreciate it. And thanks for watch watching slash listening, I guess. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Thanks for doing whatever it is that you do. We appreciate it. And we will be back at some point. Bye.